Have you heard about chaos theory? Now, chaos is something we all know. So this is chaos, this is chaos, and this is absolute nightmare. Now, what exactly is chaos theory? All right, so long story short, chaos theory is a branch of mathematics that studies systems that are very highly sensitive to initial conditions, like the double pendulum, for example. I happen to already made a video about this, so if you want to check it out, link in the description. Now, what does chaos theory has to do with Lorentz attractor? Well, believe it or not, it is actually from the Lorentz attractor that chaos theory got all its focus and popularity. And the focus of this video is about the Lorentz attractor. But since I like to keep things practical, we are going to see how to implement and simulate this wonderful butterfly using Python. And you will really see the sensitivity of initial conditions. So, hope you enjoyed the video. By the way, this subject was suggested by a colleague of mine on LinkedIn, so feel free if you have any subject that you want to understand or simulate it in Python, let me know in the comments as well. Alright, so let's go. Have you heard about the term butterfly effect? Now it's a term that gained a lot of popularity these recent days. You can see here by Google Trends, very famous these days. Now on an unrelated matter, do you think that the flap of a butterfly in Mexico can cause a tornado in America. I mean, that sounds pretty extreme as a question. And it sounds as a good question even. All good questions deserve a paper. And so it did. There is actually a paper discussing this matter. It was actually written from Sir Lawrence himself. I'll link the paper in the description if you want to check it out yourself. But long story short, we don't know. <laughs> That's the thing. We don't know if the flap of a butterfly can cause actually a tornado in America, or that there is absolutely no way the little change that a butterfly causes, dramatic changes in the future, to eventually cause a tornado in America. Now, how on earth would such a question cross someone's mind? Well, speaking about Earth, Lawrence was an American mathematician and a meteorologist who went all out trying to model and simulate Earth atmosphere with more than 12 parameters, including temperature, humidity, and such. Now, why did he want to model and simulate Earth atmosphere? Well, it was to answer a very basic question we ask ourselves every day, is why can't we predict the weather? What will the weather be two weeks from now on, you know? And it is, in fact, the act of predicting the weather that brought all the focus to the chaos theory. Now when we say simulate Earth atmosphere, what do we mean by that? It's actually laying down a model to actually measure or simulate the behavior of Earth's convection or atmospherical convection if you want. Atmospheric convection is a process within the Earth's atmosphere where warm air rises and cooler air descends, creating a vertical movement and circulation patterns. Now Lawrence came with a system of differential equation and tried to plug in 12 parameters and see how the system behaves. He once ran the calculations, let's say at t equals 0, and stayed on the computer until t equals 25. Let's say, just an example. At t equal 25, left and went elsewhere, let's say. And then when he came back, he saw the results he get at t equals 50, let's say. But then he wanted to try again at t equals 5 with the same conditions that were obtained in t equals 25 he realized that the data had nothing similar with the previous results. It seemed rather obvious that the system had a very chaotic nature. Now maybe he thought that the problem was in the 12 parameters he was computing, so he reduced it to 3 parameters only, resulting into this differential equation system, where the constants sigma, rho and beta are system parameters proportional to the Prandtl number, Rayleigh number, and a certain physical dimension of the layer itself. Now when he chose specific values for these constants, so sigma, rho and beta, of sigma is equal to 10, beta 8 over 3, and rho 28, he saw that the system behaved very chaotically. What do we mean by that? If you give an initial condition of x, y and z, you're on the simulation, you will get one result. If you go just slightly below that point, like even in one hundredth of that point in difference, you will see that eventually the result will look completely different of the first one. So unfortunately for him, his system kept being chaotic. But fortunately for us, he brought to our mind what we call 
chaos theory. Now with that in mind, let's actually utilize Python to simulate and animate Lorentz attractor. To really see how each parameter influence each other, and how even slight changes in initial condition can lead to completely different results. Alright, so let's go to Visual Studio Code. Now to simulate actually the Lorentz attractor in Python, it's very straightforward. We have our system right here, so dx dt, dy dt, and dz dt is equal. Now in reality, x, y, and z represent respectively the rate of convection, the horizontal variation of temperature, and the vertical variation of temperature. But for the case of simplicity and in this video, we will consider that x, y, and z is simply a vector, a 3D vector, corresponding to a position in space. Now, the first thing we gotta do is to import the libraries, numpy, as always, since we are doing numerical computation, and then matplotlib.pyplot, and then scipy.integrate. This is the function ODEN that we almost always use to solve a system of ODEs. The second step would be to define the constants and variables. For example, we have sigma, rho, and beta, which represents the Prandtl number, the Riley number, and the physical dimension beta, where by using these values, the system behaves chaotically. So here I've defined sigma, beta, and rho. Okay, we're on this. Now, here we solve our system. So I'm going to show you first this. We solve our system with ODE int. This is the crucial function. Now, this function ODE int is used to simulate the evolution of a dynamic system described by three ordinary differential equations. So this system right here. This is our system of differential equations. We have dx over dt is equal to a function of x. And then y and sigma will represent in a way a constant. Same goes for dy dt. It is equal to a function of y and dz dt, which is equal to a function of z. This function ODE int gets as input the initial condition so the position 0. The second argument is a function describing the system of ODEs. The system of ODEs is here ds dt is equal to something times s. So here s represents our vector of x, y, and z, some temporal domain in which we want to solve the system. Here time points. You can see here I defined it here time points. And then additional arguments which represent the constants of our system. Now, how does the function ODE int work? Now, we have an initial condition here. Let's say position 0. And then we have the time points. So the temporal domain where we want to have the solutions. We want, for example, from 0 to 40 seconds across 1001 points. Alright, so we have S0 at t equals 0. So it's an initial condition. And we want to have the values of S, so the x, y, and z, at the time t equals t1. We get S1 by utilizing the numerical scheme for calculating derivatives. So this represents the Euler method, if you don't recall, where we can approximate a derivative ds over dt is equal to S1 minus S0 divided by delta t. So this is a continuous derivative, and this is a discrete derivative. By exploiting this, we can express S1, which is equal to S0 plus dt times ds over dt. So this is the derivative. Now, we have S0, which is the initial condition. Now we are searching for ds dt. And since we have the time points right here, we have dt, which represents just the interval between two consecutive times. Now, how do we get ds dt? We get ds dt by, re by replacing S0 right here. So, right here, if we replace in this system x, y, and z with x0, y0, and z0, we will get dx over dt, dy over dt, and then dz over dt at the time equals 0. Once we do that, we have dt, ds over dt, and s0. We can easily compute s1, and once we computed s1, we redo the calculations for s2, 3, 4, 5, until s1001, which corresponds to t equals 40 seconds. So this is what we did right here. So we have the function ode int that takes as input system of ODEs, here, the system of ODEs is a function that helps us calculate this vector d vector, which represents ds over dt. Here, you see we return a d vector, which is, which is equal to sigma times y minus x, x times rho minus z minus y, and then x times y minus beta z, which is exactly this one right here. You see? This one. Alright, we extract the positions and then we just simply reallocate the x, y, and z solutions to be able to plot them later on. So if I run this, okay, now we can plot our results by doing a figure axis is equal to plt.subplots. 
Now, since we have a 3D plot, we specify that subplot keyword argument setting the projection to 3D. So, and if we print this, you see that here we have our plot. Now, the thing is, when you do plots on Jupyter Notebook, there is no really interaction with it. So this is why I copied exactly the same structure of this file right here and pasted it in a regular Python file. So like so, here we import the libraries, defining the constants, and then solving the system numerically, so, and then plotting. If I run this, you'll see that we have this plot right here. And then we can actually view it in 3D. Now this looks pretty cool, but we want to actually see the evolution of the points, so how the line is actually moving and evolving. To do this, it's actually pretty simple. I have here a section called animating the solution. What you are going to do is utilize this function right here, func animation. So let me do a func animation. So animation is equal to func animation. That takes as input a figure, this figure right here. Some function that we will update each time. So update. And then the total number of frames we want to run the simulation. So for example, it will be the length of time points, like so. Mm -hmm. And specifying the interval is equal to 25. Now 25 here, why did we choose 25? Since we have here a discrete time between 0 and 40 seconds across 1001 points, between each second we have 25 elements. So, to have an accurate simulation, we specify that we want to display each second 25 frames. This is what it corresponds to. And now we have to define this function update. So let me move this up here and define the update function. We want to update the plot each time at this frame right here. And to update the data on a 3D plot, we simply do Lorenz PLT, which is the name of the plot. Okay. We do a set data to specify X and Y data. And then to specify the Z data, we do set 3D properties. Okay. And then we return our Lorentz plot. So here it's actually Z solution. All right. So if you run this, you'll see we get this plot right here, but it's still not animating. That's because we are passing at every frame the entire array of X solution, Y solution, and Z solution. To get the impression that the plot is updating dynamically, you have to specify another variable here called X current and then same goes for x y and z all right so here i update it to x current y current and z current now here it's equal from zero all the way up to frame plus one like so now if we run our code you'll see that it's dynamically updating right now now something else we can do to improve it even further we can specify the limits of our plot to really see the evolution of it we can very easily do this by specifying a limit for the x, y, and z the axis, saying that the minimum across the x axis is, well, the minimum of the current value of x, and so goes for the rest of them. If we run this, you'll see that now it updates automatically each time the, the boundaries or limit of our axis. Now something else we can do is to actually keep only 100 frames or 100 position displayed. To do so, it's very simple. You see here, we say it's x solution between 0 and frames plus 1. We can specify the lower limit here. A lower limit is the maximum between 0 and frames minus 100. And then the lower limit right here, if frame for example is equal to 25, here we have the maximum between 0 and minus 75. The maximum is 0. So here the current solution would, will be between 0 and then 26. But now, if frame is equal to 125, we are going to compute the maximum between 0 and 25, which is equal to 25, and then here, the lower limit will be 25, and the frames will be 126. Alright, so let me run, just run the code and show you. Okay, so let's run. Now we can see that we are displaying, and then when we reach the frame 100, up, oh, we can see that now it displays only 100 frames. We can leave this run and see what will happen. Alright, pretty interesting. Now to actually display two simulations at once, it's just a copy-paste, so let me do this right now. So I have Now to make this simulation, it's actually pretty easy. You see here, I just added another variable specifying the position of the second system of 0 and then 1.1, .1, then 1.0, and then we solve exactly the same 
with system2, so I just did a copy paste where I just changed the index2 here. So here it's 2, 2, 2, etc. So this is exactly the same. Where instead of having underscore 1, you have underscore 2. Then same goes here for the plot. So we have a first plot for the first system and a second plot for the second system. Adding a color of red for the first one with a label specifying the position just to know a bit which one it is. Alright. In the update function, it is also the same thing. We get the current of the x, y, and z to the first system, and same goes for the second system. We set and update the data, and we return the plot1 and plot2. So it's very easy in a way. If I run this code, you'll see that we get this result right here. So if I can zoom in here, we can see them both being repelled from this point right here, and then eventually you will see that they will start diverging, even though there is just a slight difference in the y-coordinate. See here? Now they are on completely different trajectories. Now something interesting to keep in mind is, here we said that Lawrence used these constants to have a chaotic system. Now what is interesting is when you change this to 20 for example, setting sigma to 20, you rerun the code, you'll see that now, interestingly, they both converge to this point right here. Slowly spinning, spinning, spinning until they reach this sort of singularity right here. You can see here, they spin, they spin, they spin. We zoom even further, and then even further. It gets even further zoomed. So if you go back to our initial point of view, this is what it is right here. So it's actually very interesting if you think about it. It keeps getting smaller, smaller, and smaller. So in this sense, the system is not chaotic, it's stable. It will always go back to this point right here. Same goes here, so if, if you set this to 20, for example, see here, we get the same result, that they both get attracted to this point right here. I can also modify the initial condition, for example, set this to 5, or 6, rather. Let's retry it again. And you can see here, they start at different points, yet they find themselves in the same location every time. So let's do a bit more extreme. Let's set this to, let's say, 20 and then 21. Okay, we rerun the code. You can see here, they start at two completely different positions. Interestingly, one converges in one dot, and the other converges in one singularity as well. Hmm. That's very interesting. But yeah, this is very simple script in Python you can do to simulate the Lorentz attractor. I was surprised how actually simple it was to simulate this very chaotic system. I hope you followed along, and if you have any question, let me know in the comments. Alright, so this is it. Bye. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, check out this video if you want to learn how to make the double pendulum in Python. If you want to learn more about NumPy and this library in general, I recommend you checking this video. So, thank you for watching, and peace!